we are back with the second part of our Andalusian adventures. In the previous episode, we explored the charming town of Frigiliana before settling into our accommodation at Hacienda del Marquesa do Hotel for three nights. As the sun rose, the hotel remained peacefully deserted with only the faint echoes of departing guests from the night before. We couldn't help but admire the rustic Spanish charm of the hotels in a courtyard. Today, we're venturing into the heart of the Spanish Wild West for an unforgettable adventure. Let's get started! Located in the Tabernas Desert, the Spanish Texas Hollywood, Fort Bravo, was once a bustling filming location for numerous Western movies. While it's no longer used for filming, it's now open to visitors who can explore this artificially created mini Wild West for a fee. Due to its resemblance to the semi-deserts of North America, the Tabernas Desert has been a popular filming location for Wild West films since the 1950s. Additionally, some scenes from the sixth season of the television series Game of Thrones were also shot in the area. There are three main studios in this desert, Oasis Mini Hollywood, Western Leone, and Fort Bravo. While all three can be visited, this video is focusing on exploring Fort Bravo. First, we strolled around the stables and admired the horses, an essential element of the Wild West experience. It is important to note that the horses must not be fed or petted, which is indicated by signs. However, for those seeking an authentic cowboy adventure, horseback riding experiences are available for an additional fee. These excursions provide the opportunity to immerse yourself in the desert landscapes and live out your Wild West fantasies. With route options suitable for riders of all levels, including beginners, everyone can enjoy the experience. At the village's entrance, a gallows catches the eye, setting the stage for an authentic Wild West experience. Stepping inside this fort, it feels like we've been whisked away to America, with the crowning touch of an American flag proudly flying at the center. From the headquarters, where the sheriff likely kept order, to the Huskow, where outlaws might have cooled their heels, this place has it all, evoking memories of classic spaghetti westerns. They also constructed a typical little Indian village, complete with tents made of leather, resembling those used by Native American tribes. These tents, with their rustic appearance and earthy tones, added to the immersive experience, transporting visitors back to a time when the American frontier was alive with the spirit of adventure and exploration. In this collection of abandoned cars, remnants of vehicles once bustling with activity lie silently, likely having served as props in various film productions. These weather-beaten vehicles, once stars of the silver screen, now rest silently, their faded paint and rusted frames testament to the passage of time. Among them, classic American cars stand as timeless icons of an era gone by, while horse transporters evoke images of daring chases and rugged frontier landscapes. Jeep enthusiasts will find themselves drawn to the sight of iconic off-road vehicles, their sturdy frames hinting at countless adventures through rocky canyons and dusty trails. Each vehicle carries with it a story of its own, 
hinting at the bustling film sets and dramatic scenes that once unfolded during filming. As we wander through this automotive graveyard, we can't help but marvel at the history and character etched into each vehicle, a testament to the enduring legacy of the Wild West on the silver screen. The area was discovered by the famous Western director Sergio Leone, who recognized the potential for cost-effective filming compared to real Wild West locations. Consequently, he promptly began constructing studios. This desert served as the backdrop for numerous spaghetti westerns in the 1960s, including film classics like The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, A Fistful of Dollars, and Once Upon a Time in the West, among others, totaling over 200 films. To enhance authenticity, an entire small village was built for the filming of for a few dollars more. However, by the 1970s, the popularity of the desert waned as the demand for Western films decreased. Then Rafa Molina, a stuntman, purchased the set for $6,000, aiming to secure roles in films shot there. By the early 1980s, he began offering guided tours of the set to visitors. Eventually, short western scenes were staged to entertain guests, and one of the buildings was transformed into a functioning saloon, serving beer. Today, this site is known as Fort Bravo. Now we're on the back terrace of the operational saloon, offering a cozy western ambience for enjoying a drink. While it might be livelier during the high season, today nobody is sitting here, allowing us to capture shots peacefully. The mood is further enhanced by sculptures of western characters, transporting us to the days of cowboys and outlaws, truly immersing us in the Wild West experience. Fort Bravo boasts two main village sets of different styles, a Wild West collection and a Spanish collection. Thus far, we've only explored the outskirts of the village, but now let's delve into the heart of the Wild West scenery. Upon viewing the footage, many of the buildings will likely be recognizable. This set comprises a blacksmith shop, a jail, a hotel, a church, a gallows, and several log buildings from the American Old West era. Additionally, we encounter the operational saloon in this area. As we walk along the dusty streets of the village, surrounded by rugged wooden buildings and the timeless allure of the Old West, the sun beats down on the weathered facades, casting long shadows across the dirt roads. We pass by the saloon, its swinging doors beckoning us inside with the promise of cool refreshments and lively conversation. From the gallows looming ominously to the quaint charm of the log cabins dotting the landscape, every corner of this village tells a story of frontier life. With each step, we are transported back in time to an era of cowboys and outlaws, where the spirit of adventure hangs heavy in the air. The church of the village exudes rustic charm and authenticity, providing a glimpse into the religious life of frontier communities.
Opposite the working saloon, there is another one that is abandoned. But we can peek in behind the swinging door to catch a glimpse of a stage, a counter, and a staircase leading to the second floor. Now let's enter the functioning saloon, where we find ourselves in a real Wild West pub. The term saloon was used for a type of bar in the Old West. Saloons served clients such as fur trappers, cowboys, soldiers, lumberjacks, businessmen, lawmen, outlaws, miners, and gamblers. The first such establishment was established in Browns Hole, Wyoming, in 1822 to serve fur trappers. Some saloons in the Old West were little more than casinos, brothels, or opium dens. One of the most characteristic features was the pair of wing doors at the entrance. The saloon boasts an upper floor that serves as a lookout point, offering a commanding view of the stage below. Taxidermy animal heads decorate the railings, adding to the rustic ambience. The stage itself is still in use and remains the focal point of the room, where performers entertain patrons with dance. Along the corridor of the upper floor, visitors can see pictures of Real Madrid players who have visited this iconic establishment, adding a touch of modernity to its rich filming history. Additionally, in the spirit of Halloween, some spooky decorations also adorn the interior, enhancing the festive atmosphere. Every day, they entertain the spectators with two funny shows, one in the saloon and the other in front of it. You can find out about the dates on the purchase ticket, but they will also be announced on the spot by a loudspeaker. The first performance starts with dancing scenes, then the situation gets more and more rough, and finally it turns into a pub fight, while a few shots are fired, and at the end, the believed to be innocent bartender ends the fight. Here you can see some excerpts from the first show.
Until the next performance, we continued exploring the village, visit the gift shop, and then the prison. Where we can even pretend to be behind bars. In this filming set, visitors can imagine the lives of the outlaws who once occupied these cramped quarters, their freedom stripped away as they awaited judgment. For a moment we experienced the sense of isolation and confinement that characterized the lives of those condemned to prison. Although just a filming set, it offers insight into the harsh realities of a true prison in the Wild West. Two exhibitions await visitors here. One showcases period cameras, film recording machines, and posters, although we did not explore this particular display. The other exhibition features postal carriages and carts from the period, which we had the opportunity to see firsthand. These exhibits offer a fascinating glimpse into the technological and transportation advancements of the era. Upon entering the exhibition space, we were greeted by a collection of statues depicting iconic figures from the Old West, which added to the immersive experience. The room itself was adorned with rustic decor, evoking the atmosphere of a bygone era. As we explored further, we encountered a diverse array of saddles, each telling a unique story of frontier life. It was truly a journey back in time, capturing the spirit of the Wild West in vivid detail, despite these being mere film sets. If you're feeling hungry, don't worry. There's a restaurant here where we enjoyed a delicious pizza. And if someone wants to spend a few nights in the Wild West, they can do so at the Fort Bravo campground, which offers bungalows, hard standing pitches for motorhomes and caravans, and a swimming pool.
Now let's explore the Spanish collection, which consists of a town square, a church, a bank building and houses in a typical Mexican village. In the deserted streets of the Spanish collection, the absence of bustling crowds only adds to the ambience, allowing us to immerse ourselves fully in the authentic architectural details and cultural elements of the Mexican village. From the quaint church to the imposing bank building and the charming houses, every corner of this meticulously crafted set offers a glimpse into the rich history and traditions of Mexico. As we explore these silent streets, we can't help but feel transported to another time and place, where the spirit of the past lingers in every adobe wall and dusty pathway. These sets may also be familiar to many from various films, as they have served as backdrops for numerous productions further adding to their allure and historical significance in the world of cinema. Thanks to the off-season travel and the afternoon time, there really isn't a soul here but us. While this set is also extremely spectacular, the previously discovered Wild West part somehow attracts more tourists and they tend to concentrate on that part. We went back to the square in front of the salon, because the second show had started, which we definitely didn't want to miss. This time, we didn't have a less exciting performance than the previous one. We could see another western story, which had everything. 
Clouds of sand stirred up by horses' hooves, fights, intrigue and, of course, a few shots were fired here as well. Let's see a little summary. With that, we bid farewell to Fort Bravo. However, our exploration of the Tabernas Desert is not yet over. We managed to squeeze in a short walk through its wild landscapes before the day's end. We parked in the free car park opposite Oasis Mini Hollywood, and we set up from here. In any case, we wanted to experience what it's like to walk in these landscapes and a short circular walk still fit into the day. The distance of the walk was 4.5 kilometers, which can be completed in an hour and a half without stopping. However, it took us two and a half hours to finish because we stopped many times to take photos and videos. While there are several walking routes in the area, the signage is not very clear. Therefore, it's highly recommended to use a GPS device to avoid getting lost in this wild landscape. Until now, we have only examined this area from the point of view of film history, but now we would like to take the opportunity to tell a little about how this desert was created and what kind of wildlife it has. The climatic conditions of the Tabernas Desert, located 30 kilometers from Almeria, are eerily similar to those experienced in the drier regions of North America in and around Arizona. Due to its high altitude and inland location, the annual rainfall is slightly higher, about 200 mm per year, but the average annual temperature is lower than in the coastal areas of Almeria. The 280 square kilometers Desert Nature Reserve is part of the Cabo de Gartanijo Nature Park. The Tabernas Desert is primarily characterized by a cold semi-arid climate and a cold desert climate. 
It is located between the Sierra de los Valabras in the north and the Sierra de Aljamila in the south-southeast, isolated from the humid winds of the Mediterranean Sea in an area with little rainfall known as the Levante. As we walked, our eyes were drawn to a hole carved into the rock face. It's fascinating to wonder about the history of this cave-like structure. Did someone once call this place home, seeking refuge within its natural confines? Or was it merely a set piece, crafted by filmmakers to add authenticity to their productions? The rugged landscape of the Tabernas Desert holds many secrets, and this mysterious opening is just one of them inviting us to speculate about its past purpose. The little precipitation that occurs is usually torrential, so the soil, consisting of marl and sandstone, with little vegetation, cannot retain moisture. Instead, the rain causes erosion and creates the characteristic landscape of barren lands. Due to the climatic conditions, its flora and fauna are scarce, but it is still home to some plants and some animal species that tolerate extreme conditions well, such as hedgehogs, jackdaws, blue rock thrush, and pintailed sound grouse. However, there are also some more dangerous species, such as the yellow scorpion, tarantula, and the black widow, but the sting of the latter is less lethal than that of the American black widow. In addition to these, you can also encounter lizards and snakes. In the vicinity of the dried up beds, you can find marsh frogs, natterjack toads, and even terrapins. In terms of plants, sea lavender thrives even in desert conditions, and in winter, the vanilla scented toad flax linaria paints the landscape white. As we continued our stroll through the desert landscape, our attention was drawn to several dilapidated structures in the distance. It was probably that they were once part of the filmmaking infrastructure. We discovered some small holes in the rocks that resemble tunnels, but the narrow gaps dissuaded us from venturing inside. Interestingly, we noticed shoe marks leading into the tunnels but none leading out. While this might seem peculiar, it's plausible that there's another exit at the far end of the passage. Still, we couldn't help but wonder about the purpose of these mysterious tunnels. As the late afternoon sun began its descent towards the horizon with each passing moment, the shadows lengthened, adding depth and dimension to the landscape. We were intending to return to the car park before nightfall. With roughly half the journey remaining, the thought of traversing the desert in darkness was daunting.
pass beneath the Puente de los Cajones bridge, we were taken aback by a light drizzle, a rare occurrence in these parts. Along the dry rambler to Taberna's river, which we had been following for some time, the sight of trickling water beneath the bridge was a welcome surprise, contrasting with the arid surroundings. Here, amidst the shelter of the bridge, plant life flourished more abundantly than elsewhere along our route, adding a touch of greenery to the rugged terrain. Leaving the bridge, we soon turned left and from here we were already close to the car park, but we still had almost one third of the way to go. However, we were not worried because we still had enough time until dark. In the distance, the filming location of the movie Sir Fistful of Dollars can be seen, but it appears to be in a very dilapidated state. Therefore, we choose not to approach it and continue our journey to the right, cutting through these spectacular rocks. Once again, we felt as if we had stepped into a scene from a Wild West movie, as this rugged area was incredibly beautiful and familiar. The sun was still shining on the mountains, casting its last rays of the day. As we trek through this landscape, reminiscent of the untamed wilderness of America, the rugged beauty of the terrain enveloped us. Towering rock formations cast imposing shadows against the golden hues of the setting sun, painting a picture straight out of a classic western film and evoke images of cowboy sagas and frontier adventures. With each step, it feels as though we've been transported back in time to an era of cowboys and outlaws, where the spirit of adventure hangs heavy in the air. One can almost imagine Clint Eastwood emerging from behind a rocky outcrop, his steely gaze fixed upon the horizon, cigar clutched between his teeth.
When we reached the stairs, the final ascent to the car park awaited us. With each step upwards, the landscape unfolded beneath us like a sprawling canvas, revealing the rugged beauty of the Taberna's desert in all its glory. The jagged peaks of distant mountains stood silhouetted against the fiery hues of the setting sun, casting long shadows across the stone desert floor below. Looking back, we were treated to a panoramic vista of the landscape we had traversed, its vast expanse stretching out before us in a tapestry of earthy tones and rocky outcrops. When we reached the top of the stairs, a breathtaking sight greeted us, the sky ablaze with the colors of a magnificent sunset. Wisps of cloud caught the golden light, transforming them into hues of fiery orange and pink in the blue sky, creating a mesmerizing spectacle overhead. The transition from day to night was captured in the ever-changing canvas of the sky, casting a warm glow over the landscape below. It was a moment of serene beauty etched in our memories as the perfect conclusion to our desert adventure. After passing through the car park of Oasis Mini Hollywood, we caught a short glimpse of the theme park area below us, which also looked interesting, but one day is not enough to explore everything. We are now saying goodbye to the wild west of Spain, but our next part is coming soon, in which we will explore the cave dwellings of Andalusia. Until then, have a nice day and keep watching us.